We have lots of Tesla stock breaking news to go over, but I'm going to start with some of the more shocking news that Elon just gave us. Dave Lee says Tesla's FSD is going to get bonkers when it can back out of a parking spot in a busy parking lot, drive to your destination, and then park at your destination's parking lot. Elon Musk responds and says probably only a few months. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that would be level four FSD technology. That would be point A to point B, no human intervention needed. That could sustain your robo taxi network. That could possibly be even level five FSD where you wouldn't even need a steering wheel or a gas pedal. So maybe I'm wrong after all in suspecting Robo taxis could come in 12 to 24 months. Maybe it could be a little bit sooner than that. I'm not going to push up my projection here. I still think 12 to 24 months because there's one major issue with a robo taxi network. That is the liability. As Hoser says and responds to Elon, who is legally at fault in FSD if there is an accident? And that's the main kind of debate here. Would it be Tesla's fault? Would it be the driver of the robo taxi's fault? There's a lot of open ended questions there that we don't have good answers for. But this really does show FSD is likely to start really gaining some traction and start to evolve at rates of speed that we have never seen before. And this opens up a lot of shareholder value. And from what I can see right now, Wall Street is asleep at the wheel while Tesla is actually providing real world AI and everyone else is dreaming about it. Tesla's actually doing it sooner rather than later. I believe Wall Street will come to this conclusion that robo taxis are closer than they've ever been before. And apparently Elon Musk also believes it's crazy that Tesla stock is at $172 per share. Here's this post from the son of Walky. He says, breaking, Elon Musk liked a tweet saying it's unbelievable Tesla's at $172 despite FSD V12.3 rollout. And he believes Wall Street is missing out yet again. As I explained in the last video, it's actually pretty rare to have a stock like Tesla giving you good news in your face and Wall Street just doesn't notice it. The markets tend to be a pretty effective place. One person gets news one person gets news. You don't tend to have people with different information, but right now it seems like we have a lot different information than your Wall Street analysts or investment banks. Inevitably, these things will correct, and that means Tesla stock will go higher. On that note, Charles QI today wrote this post. He says, quote, today I bid farewell to Waymo, marking the end of a chapter in my career. He joined Waymo in 2019. He thanks Waymo for the opportunities that are provided. And when he joined Waymo, it was just a concept theory that they could deploy robo taxis. And now there is robo taxis in four different cities. I believe he says San Francisco, Los Angeles, Austin, and Phoenix, Arizona. He says in his new chapter, he will be joining the Tesla autopilot team to work on FSD. While this move may come as a surprise to some, it has been a carefully considered decision. Back in 2019, when I chose my first full-time job, Tesla was one of my top choices alongside Waymo. I was even fortunate to be interviewed by Elon and got his offer. Although I initially chose Waymo, my interest in Tesla has remained strong. I became a Model 3 owner and have kept a close eye on the team since then. I believe there are multiple paths to achieving level 4 autonomy. Diversity in approaches is not just beneficial, but essential for innovation and progress. To quote Andrew Carpathy, which he could be another one going to the Tesla AI team here soon. He's kind of an open agent right now. As a closing remark from our email exchange in 2019 regarding my decision between Tesla and Waymo, quote, at the end of the day, we're still building towards the same goal and that future can't come soon enough. So I'll go out on a limb and say that this is good news for Tesla. Estimated delivery times for the Model 3, the rear wheel drive and the long range in the US has changed. Uh, you do have um, deliveries that were expected April to May of 2024. Now they are May to June 
of 2024. So you're seeing these getting extended out. A lot of people believe that's because production is really going slow with this refreshed Model 3. I'm not under that assumption because not a lot has really changed with the refresh model three sure there's been some cool things like the light bar added the new interior but is that really gonna slow down tesla's production that much i don't think so i actually think there's a lot of demand for the model three in the u.s and that's why the wait times are getting pushed out but i, I think we'll know more on that once we get the actual earnings and the earnings call from tesla and the delivery number i think the u.s is the biggest wild card that we have for this quarter because we have no idea what demand look like in the u.s but judging off of the price increases we have seen for the model 3 specifically the long range going up a couple hundred dollars in price over this last quarter as well as the model y prices getting raised here well in just the next couple of days on my birthday on april 1st that would show me at least that demand is probably doing just fine or tesla is saying screw selling units we don't even care about unit volumes anymore and they're focusing more on profitability and unfortunately you know sacrificing volumes for profits is what the markets want right now that brings us to this next post from troy Teslike. he says if it seemed likely that Tesla might sell fewer cars in Q4 2024 than the 466,000 units they sold in Q2 2023, what would you want Tesla to do? Number one, do whatever is needed to beat that number, including price cuts. Or number two, focus on maximizing profit and improving margins. 68% of you guys out of 4,000 votes so far said maximize profit and margins only 32 percent of you guys said do whatever is needed including price cuts and i believe tesla has come to this realization the markets from now on maybe for years to come until rates if they go back down to zero maybe this will change but for the foreseeable future for the next couple of years most likely markets are going to care more about profitability and, and here's the logic the logic is if you're profitable now and you grow profitability, you can start doing buybacks or you can start doing dividends. Both of those reward shareholders right now. The logic behind just grow your top line is you grow your top line years later, you'll start growing profitability and then you'll be able to give dividends and buybacks. But right now, when rates are this high, markets, they want some cash back in form of buybacks or dividends. And until rates are super low again, that's probably going to be that way. Now, good news is, I believe Tesla has started to focus more on profitability. Again, as I said in the last video, step one was Tesla not giving full year guidance. That was step number one. You can't have a guidance target on your head and you know essentially be promising this level of growth and focus on profitability. Those things in this market environment for autos just does not work. Second was Tesla just raising prices on the Model Y. And third was the reduction of the work week in China. That's likely a way of, well, reducing expenses instead of laying people off. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. People keep their jobs and they're working less. So they're making less and saving Tesla money. And let me just be honest, if the markets even get a whiff of Tesla is focusing more on profitability now, if that even starts, well, yeah, Tesla stock is going to start doing a whole hell of a lot better. Then at that point, maybe the markets start to pay attention to the improvements that we're seeing almost every day with FSD. Kathy Woods, ARK Invest, bought another 116,408 shares of Tesla stock on Friday. Here you can see hundreds of cyber trucks spotted here, as well as a bunch of them charging over here and a bunch of them over here as well waiting to be shipped to customers you can see the uh little uh uh papers in the windows here these are cyber trucks ready to be shipped out tesla superchargers have exceeded 55,000 worldwide incorporating a global charging network you have 50,000 superchargers in the u.s denmark has 500 Tesla's Korea has a thousand and Tesla China has 10,000. 
And it was just recently where Tesla crossed over 50,000 superchargers, and now you're at 55,000 superchargers. I think this is very important because if you live somewhere like I do in Michigan, you basically have to charge at home because if you don't have the Tesla charging network, then the other networks suck and they take forever to charge. We understand that. And there's just not enough chargers and they don't charge fast enough. Those are the two issues that will prevent mainstream mass adoption. Now, in some areas, this is not as big of a problem. But if you live where I live, you have to charge at home. Tesla has released six new colored Cybertruck wraps in the US. New colors and prices are iridescent purple for 6,500, forest green for 6,500, satin crimson red for 6,500, uh, all of these are 6,500, tactical green, satin dark gray, and copper tinted clear. Sawyer Merritt says a guy wearing a bright red Make America Great Again hat walked up to me today while I was in the Cybertruck and he said this is the coolest vehicle I've ever seen. The hate for Elon is ridiculous. Rock on, man. And uh, Sawyer Merritt says a cool product is a cool product. Over here on Google Trends, it looks like the Cybertruck is really starting to have at least the first start of the halo effect on the other Tesla products as well. The Cybertruck's Google Trend activity is starting to get ridiculous, going from 31 to 35. It's ramping up big time. Model Y in the same time frame went from 33 to 35, but look at the Model 3 from 36 to 39. Again, I just don't buy the whole demand problem. Maybe there is a production problem with the Model 3, but when that gets fixed, Tesla's deliveries are going to... I don't want to say rocket higher, but based on Google Trends, that's what that would suggest. Besides this weird spike in the first week of January, this is the highest search trend activity for the Cybertruck going all the way back to September of 2023, which that tends to be the biggest quarter for Tesla overall. So, I mean, you know, what do you draw out of that? You're seeing a lot of demand or search trend activity at the very least for Tesla's products. Inventory numbers for the Model Y still almost at record highs around 8,300. The Model X is falling a little bit, recently seen a big spike sitting at about 1,800 in inventory, and the Model S and the Model 3 sitting right on top of each other at about 1,000 units in inventory apiece. So inventory very low for the Model S, the Model 3, as well as the Model X, but Model Y inventory is, is really up there, which kind of flies in the face of Tesla raising prices. If inventory is high, that would suggest either overproduction or less demand. But Tesla raising prices really suggests it's likely not a demand problem, maybe an overproduction problem. And that is why they did lower the, the hours that their Chinese employees can work over in Shanghai. Point is, I think with that news yesterday, a lot of people jump to the conclusion that that's bad news for Tesla. I think Elon is going to do the best or, or make the best choice for Tesla as possible. If, if, if Elon is faced with either overproduce the Model Y and just build up a bunch of inventory or slow down production a little bit, cut people's hours a little bit, make more profits, but maybe not produce as many. I think Elon's going to go with the best choice possible, which was likely slow down production a little bit, cut people's hours, Tesla makes more profits. I think that's the choice that Elon went with. And Wall Street, they seen it as bad news. I'm not convinced of that. I actually think that was good news. Tesla continues to run about 4,000 different ads via Google. Some of these are now advertising the low leasing prices of the Model Y, like $379 a month, autopilot that comes standard, the $7,500 tax credit, as well as just the pricing on the Model Y up front of about $36,490 with seating up to seven. I think Tesla's advertising the right things. Again, I don't know if Google is the right place to be advertising. I really think we should probably be advertising on like the TV and maybe those are people that aren't as accustomed to Tesla's products to begin with. I say that because I don't know anyone that owns a Tesla and here in Michigan, you barely see them, at least where I live. And everyone I know has cable television. So 
maybe that's just my my perspective of this let me know what you think down below in the comment section where should tesla be advertising for the most bang for their buck Sentiment on stock twits today is 33. That is bearish. Yesterday you were at 55, which was bullish. Message volume today is a little bit higher than yesterday, which is surprising because today is Saturday. Markets are not open. Yesterday was Friday and markets were open. You're at 53 today for message volume. Yesterday was at 51. I would say that's good, right? More people talking about Tesla means more potential buyers of Tesla. Tesla stock and the participation ratio is back to 55, which is also great. That just shows you more accounts are talking about Tesla as well. Option activity on Friday from hedge funds and institutions via the interesting flow sentiment. This tracks large orders, block trades, sweep trades from hedge funds and institutions for hundreds of thousands or hundreds of millions of dollars. It has kind of a wide range, but overall, these are not retail investors that are making these trades. These are big money hedge fund institutional trades. And on Friday, you had 613 orders totaling $666.18 million with a positive order value of 53%. So I would say pretty neutral overall, slightly Slight, slight bullish tilt. Last week, you had 58.2% of option activity to the call side and to the put side, 41.8%. So that looks uh, pretty good. You had cost to borrow fees on Friday of 8.6%, suggesting there's still a lot of shorting activity taking place in Tesla. And I'm sure when our short interest numbers actually update, you're going to see another stair step upwards and that's going to put shorts even in a more rough position if if they're really betting against tesla right now again i think on the next earnings it's going to be clear tesla's focusing more on profitability and i think we're going to break that streak of tesla falling 10 percent after earnings it has been four quarters in a row where tesla's fallen 10 percent after earnings i don't think that's going to happen and i plan on talking about that in the next video so stay tuned to the channel for that one and that is when you could be looking at quite a short squeeze on your hands um for tesla stock again based on that narrative everyone's piling into these short positions whereas i think tesla is going to surprise the upside again you do have 3.46 percent short interest off free float with 16.56 billion dollars currently in short positions even though the stock has fallen a lot just imagine if tesla was back to 260 dollars per share the dollar amount here sold short would be like 30 plus billion dollars shorts would take a massive beating and they lost about 1.3 billion dollars just from tesla's lows to the mid 170s so from 160 to like 175 Short sellers lost almost one and a half billion dollars. Just keep going on that, and they're gonna lose a whole hell of a lot more money than uh, what they've seen recently. The percent of stocks above their 50 day moving average on Friday was down about 5%, meaning 5% of stocks in the markets fell under their 50 day moving average on Friday. That's a pretty big deal. It looked like you did see kind of a broad based sell off across the board. Some stocks did a little bit better. Some of your big tech stocks did a little bit better. So the NASDAQ was slightly green up about 0.16%. But look at the Russell. The Russell was down about 1.3%. And you definitely see that reflected here in this chart. Friday was a big down move when you've really, for the most part, been on an upwards trend of more stocks breaking above that 50 day moving average so not a great sign for the markets but again i really don't think there is anything to crash the markets or give you a large correction at this point now that the fed is your friend i mean jerome powell made it clear any weakness in the economy and they're gonna start cutting rates like crazy i don't want to be sure when you have the fed that is that friendly to the markets that is that bullish to the markets you don't want to be short in that market environment. Now, believe it or not, what we seen on Friday was was good. We did hit that low at about $166. Tesla stock, you can see this is a green candle here. So that means you ended up closing higher than you opened, even though it was a red day. Typically, if you get a green candle that is actually a red day, that doesn't happen too often. And when that does happen, that tends to be a pretty good sign of further upside. That just means you sold off or you gap down lower 
and then you ended up rising into the end of the day. That shows a lot of demand came in at lower prices and the demand really continued to follow up into the end of the day. And you could see this here on the one minute candlestick chart. You, you almost closed at the high of the day. That's a very good sign, especially heading into a Friday. And basically from the open today, you fell a little or on Friday, you fell a little bit and then you just rocketed straight up. You did consolidate, trade sideways, downwards a little bit, and then you just continued higher. So I think on a technical basis, what you've seen on Friday actually was a very good sign of maybe some strength coming back into tesla it's been a very weak period of time and you did just recently bounce off of this lower bar here this downtrending level of support you're kind of in a weird limbo moment right now i i, I will say that you either fall back to this support line this trend line here you find support you bounce again or you get above this 175 level and then you can run to 200s low to uh you know even you know uh call it about 205 that would be the next level i would be watching for if you get above 175 start to break above 190 so you could be looking at a lot more upside here than downside in my personal opinion again because the fed is now your friend if you take a look at the rsi the rsi also is quite on the oversold side at 39.62 which again just means you're already very negative in tesla like what is not priced in at this point to tesla stock that we don't know about like tesla's gonna miss on deliveries who cares we already know that wall street estimates are way too high is that really gonna be a big negative i think it depends where the number comes in but probably not okay it's probably not gonna be this huge negative catalyst uh like it like it can be sometimes just to get back to neutral would be 50 on the rsi and i think tesla stock would have to break into the 180s just to get back to neutral with that said that is going to go ahead and conclude this video hit that like button as well as subscribe to the channel if you guys would like to come trade with us live in real time as well check out that link down below in the description of this video follow the x account it is michael tyler over there would love to see you over there and we can chat and conversate you guys enjoy the rest of your weekends and I will see you in the next one.